Hello everyone, welcome to New York. This is Nima Sufi, I'm a documentary filmmaker. A couple of weeks ago, we went to Namibia, Africa to work on a documentary about Almond Diamonds Namibia. As a documentary filmmaker for the past 10, 12 years, I had the opportunity to travel to so many countries and working on so many different documentaries. But to be honest, it's the first time I'm actually filming myself because my job is usually being behind the camera just because I saw something special when we were filming Almond Diamonds Namibia and that was a sense of pride. I saw all the people working for Almonds Namibia and how much they love what they do, and I saw that sense of pride bringing people together, not only in Namibia, but people working for Almond Diamonds around the globe. So I hope if you're watching this documentary in Namibia, you get to know Almond Diamonds better, and if you're watching this on a cruise ship, you get to know Namibia better, and it encourages you to travel to Namibia. Enjoy. Namibia, named after Namib, the world's oldest desert, which dates back to 80 million years ago, the Jurassic Age, where ocean serenely meets desert. Home to the highest sand dunes and the second largest canyon in the world, Namibia is a wondrous wilderness destination, extending a majestic landscape to elephants, lions, giraffes, the world's largest population of rhinos, the roaming cheetah, as well as one of the Earth's oldest living plants, the Wellwitzia, a plant that can live for over 2,000 years. With breathtaking crimson sunsets and pristinely clear skies, stargazers flock to soak under the surreal starry Namibian nights. Namibia is also home to one of the most amalgamated anthropological societies in the world. Simply said, Namibia is Africa's best kept secret. I think people should come to Namibia because as it is, it's the cleanest city in the world at the moment. And we have the coldest ocean in the world, so something that people can really experience. Namib Desert, there's Dune 7, there's Lagoon, Balfas. <laughs> Open white space, clean blue sky, the air is nice, the water is nice, the people are friendly. It's like a tiny little thing, wow, and it has so much in it. We've got a very interesting country with all diverse cultures. No matter what type of culture you are, so when they come to Namibia, they would feel like it's home. A lot of people choose Namibia to be one of their retirement homes. The food is good. I mean, we tend to eat more organic meats. It's a wonderful place to stay. Yeah, wonderful sunset, of course. <laughs> Dunes and ocean next to each other, which is really cool. Like, like very few places have that. It's the best country in the world. If you have been to Africa, you have never been to Namibia. You have never seen the beauty of Africa. It's a hidden diamond that you must see. Gaining independence from South Africa only as late as 1990, Namibia is one of the youngest nations in the world. It is also one of the most sparsely and least densely populated countries with only 2 million residents. So Namibia is a special place in, in the sense that when my father took over the country, there was not even a single paper or any other reference documents. We have to start afresh from nothing. So we said, oh, war is over now. Let's reconcile, let's build our, our new country. Namibia may be young, but it has a strongly emerging African economy. Fishing, tourism, agriculture, and mining are the four cornerstones of Namibia's economy. In particular, the diamond mining industry has unparalleled potential with the world's largest diamond deposit of 85% gem quality stones. We've got a lot of other things, but I think one of the best things that we have are the best diamonds in the world. The diamond sector is one of the biggest sectors in the Namibian economy. Up to almost 40% of our export earnings come from diamonds, and we contribute some three billion Namibian dollars from the diamond industry to the state revenue fund. The real value of diamond is it's the backbone of life. Unlike other, other countries where you have a nice soccer team, nice actor that represents the country overseas, we have it here. But I think this diamond industry, our factory, uh, represents very well Namibia. Being a gemologist, I learned about Namibia. I studied Namibia in GIA. It's known for the most incredible rough diamonds in the world. 
understanding everything here brought the whole picture together for me. Foreigners coming into Namibia, particularly for this industry, and particularly where we want to take it from a beneficiation perspective, foreigners are key. Only a decade ago did the diamond industry begin to grow with the opening of several diamond factories. However, multiple counts of economic catastrophes and fierce competition saw almost all of the factories perish. Only one factory stayed open this entire time, Almod Diamond, which not only stayed open, but actually expanded from a single factory with 30 employees to three factories with over 200 employees on its payroll. Soon enough, Almod Diamond became a global phenomenon in the diamond industry, growing to operate over 100 stores in 22 countries with nearly 3,000 employees. Almod Diamond not only gains global exposure for its special cut diamond, the crown of light, but also puts Namibia on the map by advertising to over 20 million people on cruise ships annually. Welcome to Almod Diamonds, Namibia. Almod Diamonds Namibia Factory celebrated its 10th anniversary earlier Chief today. Chief Executive Officer Albert Gett Dr. Hage to Gaynor. over 100 stores has remained open for good and bad years of the mining industry. In one of the oldest diamond cutting and polishing. Knowing exactly that the president is pretty much busy to come to the factories because he values what the factory is doing. Almond Namibia, in the past 10 years, has become the number one cut polish facility in the country. So if you look into the scope now, you'll see the crown light diamond next to a regular round brilliant, and you'll see the difference in sparkle, which looks amazing. Now this diamond is being cut in Namibia, promoted in Namibia, and this is the reason why this factory has never closed down for one single day. The president of Namibia came for our 10th anniversary and so many government officials that came with him. For us, it's a great sense of pride. There's no guarantees in life for anything. All you know is that you're gonna work and put all your energy, your 20 hour days, continuously working, facing all the challenges and many challenges working halfway across the world. But when you can succeed, it's emotional. Okay, now do, how do you, what do you check? Oh, yeah. when do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas, how many stones can you cut in a day in this machine? 60 stones a day. 60? 60, 60, 60 stones, stones yeah. a day. It's impressive. I've been trained, I saw them working. So I'm happy. I didn't touch a big operation sophisticated equipment, transfer of technology already took place at that level, where our people can now sit there and talk with authorities, say I was here for 10 years and I can do that. Excellent. We started here 10 years ago and Albert came here and he asked for nothing. He asked for nothing from the government, he asked for nothing from anybody. We've worked with many governments over the years. A lot of times they hear companies come in and make many promises. And that's why when I came to Namibia, I said thank you for the opportunity. And if we do a good job, please support us. Let us prove ourselves to you. Because Albert believes very strongly if you work hard and you do the right thing, good things will come of that. I know Albert quite well. I seen how he treats his workers. I saw him in action. He's quite a hard worker. I started from the bottom up. I was 18 when I started working. Why? Because my father had a stroke, partners took his money, so I couldn't go to university. My father says, you have two things in your life. You have your health and you have your name, and you work hard. Lucas, what happened to your leg? It's soccer. Soccer, soccer. Yeah. ah. Yeah. Did yeah. you win? Yeah, we win. <laughs> okay, as long as you won, okay. <laughs> Ruben couldn't do it without all of you. Thank he you. has to travel, and you have to make sure that everything comes out excellent. Thank you. Thank you. How long do you work here? 
I'm two years, two weeks, and seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> Detail, I like that. Thank you for being our partner. Thank you very much, I'm happy. You make it very different for us. He reminds me of my father. He must be able to say this is our company. I have a little bit of shares. Not okay. just labor. What we do? Tati Silas, Memisara, is our partner. Very good. Man. This is our partner. Said, now I'm relaxed. I was Wait, no, Memisara. I was going to be rough on you. It's the policy of Namibian government to attract foreign investment to Namibia. Because we can't do everything ourselves. In terms of financing, uh, but also, more importantly, you need that skills investment. You need foreigners to come into the country and impart those skills to Namibians as well. So we want the land resources to be effectively utilized in order to fight poverty, hunger. And also we have one, Namibia is one of the countries with the highest income inequality. So that is the challenge we need to address. The, the, the inequality must be addressed. If you travel to many different countries, you will find that we all have similar challenges, just in different degrees. The ones that adapt, the ones that are able to deal with the challenges quickly and overcome them. When I reflect on my own life, for example, um, I don't necessarily come from a silver spoon background, but I come from a background that made me understand very quickly and very early in life what hard work can help me achieve. When I didn't have a job, it provided me with a job. I didn't know about Diamond. I started with the training. We had uh, foreigners the Indians and I've Russians guys and then they taught me the whole thing. We stayed open, we kept growing and we were committed. We're committed to the people of Namibia. Running a business is not easy in today's world. But when you're in a business and you have a relationship with your staff because they're like your family. So for myself I felt like a proud father when I was there. Armand Diamond have been loyal to us. It's good. I cannot. I, I can express myself. It's good because it's where I get bread and butter for my children. I get life in Almond. I get my children go to school here with Almond. Those factories that closed during the economic difficult, it led to um, Namibians losing jobs. But uh, because Almond kept their doors open, uh, those Namibians employed by the company, maintained their jobs and livelihood and continued to support their families. I was from other company. They only told us that uh, put down your tools, the factory will cross. But most of us, we are here. My father, my mother never looked at a person for how wealthy they were. They looked at a person, was he a decent person, a good person. What I learned from my father and my mother is I haven't changed. I don't let any kind of success go to my head. Thank you, I appreciate very much. I want to tell you something. I started in diamonds 40 years ago. And, I, and when I started, I used to sit and grade and look at stones with a loop and tweezer. And 40 years later, I still do the same thing. Almond uh, can help also personal life. My house was broken in. I went from here. The driver took me home and then the company gave me $1,000 immediately to see how can I recover. When you meet people in town, they say, are you still at Alma? Yeah. Oh, I see life is good for you. I see, why, why, your hair, your outfit, I like it. Maybe you guys are getting less there, stuff like that. I don't have a loan for the government. I'm able to invest my money. I can maintain myself, basically. Just that freedom as a young person that you get to have. We have uh, 200 people. Many of them, they have children, they have brothers. You multiply, you have already maybe 600 people that benefit from Alma. We provide transport, Namibian company, we're paying for it. We're using bank services in Namibia. We're using two catering companies, local, uh, Namibian. And now maybe we came to 1,000 people that benefited from uh, Alma. We've also seen in the Alma factory that a lot of the high-level jobs are now occupied by Namibians and even some of the instructors or trainers themselves are Namibians. When they started with those few Namibians, some of them saw a diamond for the first time in the corridors of uh, Almod. 
and today they are playing a significant role in the diamond industry. For us, when we first came here, we had to bring expats to train our local team. And today with a great sense of pride, I can say that that local team has grown to become the trainers. Walk around with the president and show him, hey look, these are the people that were the trainees and now they are the trainers. What more can make you proud when you can achieve something like that? How are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, good day. It will take them nine months. You keep your job. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I end up promoted. I came here as a diamond polisher. Then I was promoted to the quality control. I even went to Israel for some courses after all and to see me growing in the future. When I applied to Alma Diamonds, I just applied as a polisher and later on I was promoted to be a staff manager. So I, I want to tell you that for myself as the owner of the business, I, I sleep with great comfort knowing that Sandra controls all of the inventory in this company. Millions of dollars in inventory are in the hands of this woman. I know there's a commitment to community, the commitment to training, what we saw today. Again, I know it's gone in dollars, but also seeing Namibians training Namibians. That is such an, an advancement of where we've come over the last decade or so. First of all, there's a unit. It's not like, you know, you go in and, oh, okay, there's a room and some people are sitting there and they're learning. I mean, you're going into an actual unit. It's its its, its own building. You learn a lot from different people, different uh, levels of experience are very much uh, a big thing in the company. The more the expert foreigners are coming here, the more the Namibians are learning from them. Reuven and his team provided skills transfer to the next generation, but it's not just, okay, here's some of my knowledge. It's 110% of his knowledge. How long are you here? 10 How, years. Where are you trained? I was trained here That's by it? Mr. Rome. Can anywhere. Yep. Very because I am in, in such age, and those girls and, and boys that came, they're in age of my, of my children. Uh, Mr. Ruven is very good. He knows how to feed his, his people. It's a present from Mr. Ruven. We are family, you know, he's my dad. <laughs> and I thought, because of my experience in my life, and I believe that I have not bad skills professional that I, then I transferred to those people. Also some uh, life experience and, and the way that and how they can improve their life in the future, not only financially. It, it says a lot. It says a lot that the company cares to make sure that it's not just about them and getting their diamonds cut, but they're making sure that people have opportunity. You know, there's a saying in, in the English language, you can give a man fish and he'll eat, but you teach a person to fish and they have food for their lifetime. Namibia is a developing country and it needs more educated people. You know, we wanted to, to cooperate with other countries in the field of economic and the training of our youth. You can bring government officials to your factory. Look, we have a factory, we have 200 people, these are all the people working here. But we have a great sense of pride in saying that we educated that next generation of people and that knowledge from finance to engineering to inventory controls, all aspects of the business. And what is the value of knowledge? There's no value for it. That knowledge is the future. Any one of those people one day to be able to go create their own business. There's no contract on that knowledge. It is the government's strong belief that the meaningful skills transfer is key to developing future Namibian leadership. I want to learn more about diamonds. If we can also go other countries and get experience from other countries. I actually want them to send me to New York. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, see, that's why I asked. Don't just keep you here. I see you yes, they must. No, we, we've, already, we've already sent people to work in the Cayman Islands for us, and we okay. plan to have more people working for us other parts of the world. So now we are really thinking to sending Namibians to, to work in, in Canada. When we started in Namibia, we had to bring skills to Namibia. So today, with a great sense of pride, 
people that work for us in our Namibian factory, and they're not gonna go up to our Canadian factory, they're gonna do the skills transfer to the Canadian employees. Education is the key to economic development. If you offer a technique in Canada, we would be most grateful. And for those people that go to Canada and work in our factory in Canada, it'll be an educational process. They're gonna learn so much so that they come back and help us to develop our country. That investment is felt a lot further than just the factory and the employees that are there. Those days of, of our diamonds leaving our shores and we're not benefiting from it are, are gone. I think as a country we've made a lot of progress in the last 10-15 years in terms of making sure that there's a value addition that's taking place here. Another thing that we see, starting to see a lot more, is the technology that is being, in, that is being brought into the country. Investment in the technology, I know you've recently spent roughly a million dollars on technology. These aren't small investments, they're commitments. It makes Namibia more competitive against the likes of India and elsewhere. And also in terms of taxes, which the key element which we need as government in order to build more schools, more roads, even in the rural settings, it enables government to be able to put up hospitals. It enables government to put up schools. Our estimates are that 70 to 80, 80 cents of every dollar that's produced from a diamond that's mined in Namibia, and dollar-wise, actually gets it reinvested in Namibia. Nice to meet you. Honorable Minister of Tourism. Tourism, that's, that's our business. It's good, tourism good. Welcome. in the Caribbean Welcome. islands. Welcome to Namibia. Thank you. So many people have reached Namibia, come here and travel to Namibia. They continue coming. And we have now reached um, double of the number of tourists that we used to have before three years ago. First of all, I would tell everybody you have to come to Namibia because Seeing is believing when you come to this country. It's so beautiful. Everything, the people, the people are so nice. Everybody's so welcoming. And when you can go to a country that's a beautiful and has polite and friendly people, hey, where else in the world are you gonna find that? Safari is something I've always wanted to do. It's kind of a dream, I think, for anyone. The most incredible thing, it's like being a National Geographic. I, I hope everyone can come and enjoy and see that because it's really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I went on a safari in Namibia, it was amazing. To see the rhinos, we got, we got out of the jeeps, we walked up to a rhino, and I never in my life believed that I would be standing next to a rhino. And it was amazing to really see the beauty of this country. And there's so many people out there that would really appreciate, if they actually knew that it's not just diamonds that come from Namibia. If you come to Namibia, your experience will be Mind-blowing. But unfortunately our country is not well known. Maybe it's what we call Africa's World Cup Secrets. We call it the smile of Africa. I want to invite you all to come to Namibia. If, I mean, nobody has perhaps heard of, of, of Namibia and you see a documentary like this, or like I said, you see a diamond from Namibia, it puts Namibia on the map, it, it raises that awareness. It's an experience. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. And no one can really imagine it until you do it. We're documenting this whole experience because we're putting out to the world what's going on in Namibia. But Namibia is a very safe country for our tourists. We, we are a country that upholds the rule of law. It's a democratic country. It's, uh, you don't have problems here that uh, needs to scare business to come like to in other places. And I don't think the world understands or knows. We're talking uh, on the cruise ships about it all the time. It's in our marketing materials. It's in the video about our company. An eight minute video that we produced has Namibia in it. It's part of our story. We never even get to the point where people ask us, you know, where does diamond come from? Because we're promoting it. We are letting the whole world know that these diamonds that we're cutting are being cut in a diamond factory in Woonhook, Namibia. This brand represents Namibia at its best. Wherever it's sold in the world, and I must appreciate your commitment to placing Namibia on the map through this product. But as a result of this product that Alma Diamond has, people begin to understand that there is a country, it's called Namibia, it's on the southern coast of Africa. They've got wonderful diamonds.
for Almod, which we are very proud of. I'm aware of um, Baby Heaven um, Orphanage in Katutura, which is one of the uh, a group of less privileged uh, kids who are getting support and help uh, from Almod. In 2003, we know that we did not have a mother to child prevention medicine. So a lot of babies were born HIV positive. We also have children that are brought here by teenagers, like you've just given birth and you do not want the child, so they bring them here and then. One of the first things we did when we got here was go to Baby Haven. We didn't even plan our, our celebration for 10 years before going to Baby Haven. We all really wanted to get there and see the children. Many of these kids have been living with us in, the, in Baby Haven for many years. In this world, you don't just take, you need to know how to give back. Not just to go out and do business. Today, in today's world, you need to be socially responsible. And when you do that, you get the goodwill. And that goodwill creates the family. I think we'd be crippled if we, if Almut Diamond Company did not really help us in all the things that we, they have helped us with. We would really have been struggling. Baby Haven was, uh, it was tough to be there, I would have to say. It was very moving, it was very emotional. Um, but at the end of the day, I was really happy to see that the kids are okay, they're doing good. And we appreciate the time that you actually could come and see what you guys have donated to us. It, it comes from a place of a good heart. You are like family to us. Thank you. Hello, may God Thank give you, you more, Thank you. more power. We look at her sincerity. You could tell that it's not for the camera. You could look in her eyes and you could feel that sincerity from her. And that sincerity is the same sincerity we have. We know that the winter was coming and we uh, had purchased coats, coats, hats, and gloves for each child and toys. Those children are so full of life. You know, they want to better themselves. They want to grow up and have an incredible future. And it's inspiring, you know, seeing a five-year-old child say he wants to be a police officer when he grows up or a cardiologist. Wow. Why would we support an orphanage? Why would we care what happens to the children? Why would we supply them their medical supplies, financial needs, make sure they're taken care of, make sure they have a home, if we're just here to, you know, take advantage? It doesn't, we don't feel that way. We don't work like that. Personally, from the bottom of my heart, humbly I say thank you very much. Well, I'm impressed with what I have seen. Just keep it up. As I said, bring the factory here. Yeah. I must be able to go and buy them. So when I met with the president here today, he said to me, Stevie Wonder once came to my country and, and said, well, the rough diamonds come from Namibia. Is there a place I could buy that diamond? And the president, I would like to see a retail store that people can not just come and know that the diamonds and the rough diamonds come from Namibia, they can actually come in and buy that diamond. Everything in the diamond industry is ultimately about distribution. Where does that polish go? Differentiation. So we now have started a project to work with Namibia, with what the president requested us to do, to try to get that store open. Almod Diamonds got a growing business, and that growing business is what enables Namibians, I think, to see much further down into the future as well and much further down the diamond pipeline. When there's a will, there's a way. What I know how to do is achieve success. So you look at the successful models that have worked in today's world. Well, we op operate 140 shops. And why do people go shopping for diamonds and jewelry and watches in the Caribbean islands? Duty free. And with a duty free status, you encourage people to buy the ticket. You encourage them to come in and experience one of the most beautiful countries they'll ever experience, Namibia. I believe we're on the right track. I think we are starting to ask the right questions to say what works for, for the investor in Namibia, but at the same time make sure that the industry actually achieves 
what, we, what it wants to achieve from a, from a value addition and a beneficiation perspective. Over the years, the diamond industry, unfortunately, has decreased its, its number of polishers because of the global uh, diamond situation. And the competition is so, so difficult and strong and the market is full. But we continued working and even expanding. So basically, we, we helped to sustain the industry in Namibia. The world is changing every day. Today people are buying diamonds on Bloom Nile. So unless you're able to create something new that doesn't subject you to competing in a marketplace that's going to drive your margins down to nothing, you're going to find it very challenging to stay in business. I'm going to introduce Namibian diamond in a size of 34 carat 20 points. And it's diamond that plan to be the biggest mid-time a crown of light, our special cut, patent stone. Almod Diamond, what it is today, may be something completely different in 10 years. Bigger, bolder, better. That's the impression that I got from the leadership of Almod Diamond when I listened to the remarks that were made. I anticipate that if we have this conversation 10 years from now, we would say, can you believe it? They did it. What we've done here for the last 10 years is grow with the government, the NDTC, because of one reason, good will. I felt so honored when they came to me from NDTC and said to me, to show our appreciation for your 10th anniversary, we're going to be giving you a very special diamond. And I announced right away that diamond will be called the Namibian Star. We do it because we're proud to say that we're a Namibian company. Establishing a new brand called the Star of Namibia, which Almod is talking about. This has been a dream for some of us, I've been working with Almond since they came to Namibia. And that was our vision. And could you imagine in the future, we sell a brand in Namibian diamond that starts with Namibian star. That diamond could launch the whole idea of a Namibian diamond by creating a wow effect. And that could be the start and creation of a new industry, opening more shops, creating more jobs, and eventually creating jewelry manufacturing. It could be all homegrown in Namibia, and the jobs it will create, because all the tourists that would come to Namibia. That potential and that excitement is the future. I could see that the emo emotionally, uh, I felt it on, on, uh, on Albert. It's, it's true. You, you work 10 years so hard, you take some idea that you, you believe in it like Albert, but you need to take it happen. Alma Diamonds has been one of the most resilient companies that I ever worked with. I'm very much impressed uh, what uh, Alma Diamonds is doing. Alma over the last 10 years has definitely been exemplary. And I'm delighted to look back and see how much we have achieved as a collective. I think the secret is the people that work for you, they love what they do, as do I. I can see it in their eyes, I can see when they're sitting on the wheel and they're polishing. Now normally when I stand up as De Beers, when we talk of three Ps, we talk of public-private partnership. But today I'm talking more around passion. As Almond to me, it's like, uh, it's, a, it's like a mother. It's a team effort, it's not just one person. We all work together as a team. Not as employees, but as brothers and sisters, it's how we are here. Yeah. Love the life you live, live the life you love. So I love my life. To me, this is my future. Not just about creating jobs for the sake of jobs, but creating long-term, sustainable jobs. So I think the future for Almond Diamonds is exciting. It's exciting for the people that are working in Almond Diamonds because they are much richer today than they were yesterday, not just in money, but also, I think, in capacity. This, this almond must pay until I get 60 years old. I believe, and that's what all of us are hoping, that it will never close up, that it will bring us up to more 20 years from now on. Well, you can all go to the other parts of the world, <laughs> but only after you do a skills transfer to another local person that can take your place here. And I'm very patriotic, to be very honest with you. I love Namibia, that's why I love the company that I work for, because I understand, in essence, what we're doing. We're not where we used to be. 
as a country or as an industry, we're not where we used to be. Nothing comes at once, you know, so we need to, step by step, we are going there. And I know that through your commitments, you will make it to the next step. I'm impressed. Yeah. It is the We are the experts. We look forward to expanding the Namibia. We look forward to growing. We care about the growth of Namibia because that growth is our success. Namibia grows and we grow. Let's continue to work together in the quest to create a conducive environment. I have passion for what I do. I love our business. I love to see that we do the skills transfer and we help people and we help their families. I love to see the tear in someone's eyes when they say, I used to have no job, I was in a village, and today I have a career thanks to Alma Diamonds. It's a great sense of pride. And I don't see any reason to ever stop doing something you love to do. <laughs> That's a sunset. May we see many sunsets with the Namibian people in Namibia in the future. Amen. Desert meets the ocean and the sun's high soil are in motion. A couple of days ago, it was, it was actually really neat. We have a song, you know, about the crown of light that was written in Namibia by the, and it was performed by a Namibian group. We actually went outside, everybody together, and we were singing the, the, the Alma Namibia song, and we were all dancing together, and it felt right. It felt right. You can't help but sense throughout that entire factory is pride. Pride from the leadership, pride from the employees, pride of achievement. We will have an, some end attempt, but uh, Almut will not. Kind of light song of Namibia was written and produced in Namibia. And then you take that song, you show it to all the other regions of your company, and they all see the song, and they all take and create a version of the song. It's the same words, but they do it with their own custom, their own accent. Look at that positive energy coming from the staff that works for this company. The Namibian diamonds that go to all our shops are the glue that connects all the region's company. It doesn't make a difference if the people are Mexican or Dominicans or Namibians. When you work with our company, we're one big international family. Thank you.